The potential of science, technology, and innovation to modernize and expand productive sectors is vast. And we, we can venture into a whole number of areas. Hydrogen, and just around the exhibition uh, centers there, they're already doing that. One knows, for example, the research being conducted under the, auspice, or the auspices of the Nelson Mandela Mining Precinct and the South African Mining Extraction Research Development and Innovation Initiative, which is aimed at revitalizing our mining industry. Significant research and development is taking place in new frontiers of industrial development such as renewable energy and green hydrogen. Medical innovation, as uh, my brother Stavros was saying, is another area where South Africa has recorded great progress. Our experience of COVID-19 has accelerated our nation's drive to achieve health security through, amongst others, vaccine production. Earlier this year, the WHO officially launched its mRNA vaccine technology hub here, well, in Cape Town. Uh, Afrigen Biologics, a South African company partly owned by the government through the Industrial, Corpor Industrial Development Corporation, is working on a new tuberculosis vaccine using mRNA technology. And we've got a number of foundations around the world that are also willing uh, to support the work that we do. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is one of such, and they allocated some money to BioVac uh, in South Africa to develop an mRNA vaccines using a local platform. This grant is going to enable our researchers and scientists to strengthen the pharmaceutical research and vaccine production ecosystem so that we are able to address both current and future health challenges. The reference that was made by Stavros about Gavi, it's, it's almost a revolution uh, that a big organization like Gavi, which has been buying vaccines for Africa from all over the world, is now, is now turning around and saying, yes, we will buy from uh, African countries that are able to, to manufacture vaccines. And just to think of it, the vac vaccines that have been utilized on our continent, 1.3 billion people have nearly all been manufactured outside our continent. And when COVID hit, we were leading the charge that we want vaccines to be manufactured here on the African continent. And now that is becoming a reality. For us, that is a great victory and great progress and success indeed. We see innovation being deployed in the course of addressing you know, another important issue, unemployment. The Jobs Fund is investing in science and technology that directly contribute to sustainable job creation as well as small business development. Earlier this month, the Technology Innovation Agency issued a call for proposals from grassroots innovators looking for funding and technical assistance on developing new products and processes. Scientific innovation was harnessed during the floods in KwaZulu-Natal and other parts of the country last year, Eastern Cape as well. Now, recognizing the importance of real-time data to inform decision-making, the South African National Space Agency collaborated with the National Disaster Management Center to make high-resolution satellite imagery available to assist the rescue and the recovery efforts that we had to embark upon. Now, given the reality of climate change, which we see nearly every season uh, in our country, this kind of scientific collaboration will become increasingly important. On South Africa's journey, 
to develop hydrogen as a source of clean, efficient, and renewable energy, work is underway through the Hydrogen Society Roadmap to integrate hydrogen and fuel cell technologies in various sectors of the economy and to commercialize technology. South Africa's Hydrogen Valley, Mr. President, is a planned integrated hydrogen ecosystem stretching from Mokubana in the north of the country, where platinum group metals are mined, to Durban, where these are shipped. The main focus of the Hydrogen Valley Initiative is the conversion, for instance, of heavy-duty diesel trucks from diesel to hydrogen and fuel cell power in order to reduce emissions. Moving to food security as an example, I'm pleased that in October 2022, I, together with the Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development, Minister Togo Didiza, we launched the Biosecurity Hub in collaboration with the University of Pretoria. This hub will facilitate collaboration to prevent, reduce, and manage crop and animal diseases, as well as assuring food safety in South Africa. This also brings me to another example in health, which is another area where we have made significant progress. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic exposed the South African population, like much of the developing world, to serious existential threats in 2020-2021, being at the mercy of vaccine monopolies, vaccine imperialism, and outright chauvinism. Our president, played a key role in opening pathways to break this legacy with global efforts to secure Africa's long-term vaccine security and challenged us as South Africa's national system of innovation to develop new pathways to ensure our nation's health security. I'm very pleased to say that towards this end, the World Health Organization and the South African Medical and Research Council have established a new mRNA vaccine technology transfer hub in the country with similar hubs intended for other low and middle income countries such as Kenya, Nigeria, Senegal, and Tunisia. And under this program, we have successfully developed a new mRNA COVID-19 vaccine candidate, AfriVec 2121, and its demonstration in animal models has been positive already. That's what we are capable of, Mr. President, as a country. More broadly, and further to the President's call, our Department of Science and Innovation is currently rolling out a national vaccine innovation and manufacturing strategy, VIMS, built around the development of three additional vaccine platforms. Is the viral-like particle, is the inactivated virus, and conjugated vaccine platforms. Its aim is to develop South Africa's vaccine innovation and manufacturing capabilities across the upstream and downstream parts of the value chain. This project is a national health priority that seeks to enhance access to affordable quality vaccines and build capacity in the country and across the African continent. Moving to reindustrialization, Mr. President, and delegates of South Africa, and in particular the role that science, technology, and innovation, STI, can play in the modernization of traditional sectors, such as agriculture, manufacturing, and mining. I just want to quickly highlight the work we are doing under the umbrella of the Mandela Mining Precinct. Because this is a, an opportunity also to account, President, to tell the nation in this important platform of yours on what we are doing and what we are capable of, so that we know what is it that we can build on. We have what we call the Mandela Mining Precinct. This is a public-private partnership between the Department of Science and Innovation and the Minerals Council of South Africa. It is aimed at revitalizing mining research and innovation in South Africa to ensure the sustainability of the South African mining industry. Also, the aim is to improve the safety of mines as well as to introduce innovative technologies 
as well as to understand how modernization will impact on people in the mineral sector. While working to support STI-enabled reindustrialization, we are also being strategic about using STI towards a more secular economy, which is another important area of intervention. In other words, we want to move away from our extractive-based economy that has large throughputs of resources and where we mostly export resources for further international beneficiation with limited resource returns into our own economy. I also want to highlight <clears throat> that a secular approach is where we recycle waste and reuse and regenerate materials that have many applications in areas such as agriculture, mining, manufacturing, human settlement, and, and transport. I also want to emphasize some areas where we've made progress in using STI to enhance service delivery and improve the capacity of the state. STI cuts across society. That's why, uh, President, uh, our slogan is the Department of Science and Innovation, making sure it's possible. Building on Nelson Mandela's famous saying, it always seems impossible until it is done. So we are joining on that to making sure that indeed it is possible. For instance, we are exploiting our space technologies, you have seen some of that president now, to collect satellite data and use this to inform government decision making. To illustrate, through our space program of Earth observation, for human settlements, we can monitor informal settlements and housing development projects using high-resolution satellite imagery, thereby improving planning and identifying areas that are vulnerable to geo-environmental risks. People who ask, why spend money up in the space when we need housing on the ground? We're spending money in the space so that we understand better how to deliver better houses. So there's a very clear connection between those. <laughs> Municipalities and district authorities are the closest to citizens in delivering services. Building on our STI capabilities, we are working to improve the capabilities of these organs of state. Some of the programs I'm very excited about in this field uh, is, for instance, our Municipal Innovation Maturity Index. President, we are able to measure every municipality, how mature it is in terms of innovation or science, technology and innovation, which is a very important test which can enable us to advance STI at local government uh, level. Through these STI applications, also government can identify areas where additional resources are needed. <clears throat> 